Hello everybody, welcome to my next uh, sort of workshop video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about simulations. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, this is one of the simulations I've been working on lately. Uh, don't ask what it is, it's just kind of one of the projects I've been working on uh, in second year. Uh, but basically, I'm just going to show you some really basic techniques on creating simulations that you can use for your projects, or if you want to see if a design works, they can also just be fun if you, if you're if you're like that. Anyways, let's just hop right into it. I'm just going to be going over some really quick uh, tutorials of creating video simulations in Inventor. So if you have the required files already for Workshop 3, uh, if you got them in an email, great. Um, if you didn't get them in an email, you can actually go to a link I'm going to put on the screen right now. And if you go to that link, there should be a folder and you can just right click and download the folder as a zip. There's a bunch of files in there. And then you can just put them anywhere on your computer and use them right away. Now, you, once you want, once you have those files, you can just go open, and you can find trackedvehicle.iam. That's what I'm going to be using today. Just open it up, and we'll get right into the next part. All right. Once you have the once you have the vehicle opened, um, you can just review it from this angle. And basically, what I'm going to be doing is very simply turning this wheel. But the thing is, I don't want to have to turn this wheel all by myself. I want it to do it automatically, and I want Inventor to make a recording of it. So right right off the bat, um, I personally hate not having shaded with edges on, so I'm going to go up to view, and I'm going to go visual style, shaded with edges. And you turn it on, it's much easier to see everything and work out of this window. So what I want to do is I want to turn this wheel. But the wheel doesn't turn itself, right? There's actually a motor in here connected to an axle and everything, and then the axle turns, which turns the wheel. So I'm going to be imposing some motion on this axle. How do I even access this axle? As you can see, if I while I hover over it, it's actually highlighting the entire assembly of the wheel and axle itself. If you, well, if you click it, you can see over in the model tree that it will highlight the front axle assembly one. Very handy. Why don't you just click that drop down arrow there? And now you actually see everything that's made up of, uh, of front axle assembly one. Here would be the wheel. And here it highlights whatever it is in red. So here, when I when I hover over the a this, it's actually the axle is is highlighted in red. So I'm just gonna click that and click the drop down. So what I want to be doing is I want to be creating a constraint on this axle that relates it somewhere to a face on the body, the hull of the vehicle. So how do I do that? Well, it's actually very, very simple. You go up to you go up to assembly, and okay. So I should uh, I'll take a couple steps back. Um, for your gear project, you'll probably have to do a lot of um, constraining gears to rods and axles and stuff because you're not actually turning the gears themselves. You're turning the axles they're on, and you want the gear to always basically the gear is pressed in the axle, it's not actually spinning on the axle, it's spinning with the axle. So you want to be constraining the gears with the axle and uh, the axle to nothing else just so that it can fit in the slots in your assembly. So here what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, getting a plane from this axle this one looks good. And I'm going to be telling the program, I'm going to be telling Inventor to make a directed angle constraint with somewhere on the vehicle's body. So I'm just going to go up to constraint. I'm going to go to angle here. 
and click on directed angle, it's the far left one. And as you can see, I'm in constraint mode, but since I already have the plane on the axle selected, I don't have to make a first selection. This isn't highlighted. Usually the first selection is highlighted and you click somewhere on the part, right? But as you, when I hover over it, nothing's selected actually, but the plane is selected. So that's very handy for us. We can just go right into wherever we want to click on the body. We can click on this face, we can click on this one. Basically, it just has to be a planar face somewhere on the hull of the body. I like doing the top part here. It's just really easy to work off of. So just click the top part, and you click Apply, and bam. You have actually created an angle constraint. You can see uh, an angle constraint of zero degrees. So that's another way of saying that they're parallel. And you can actually see that these look pretty much exactly parallel. They should be exactly parallel. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Exit out of the constraint mode. Now if I try to click and drag this axle, you'll see the little the crosshair pops up telling me I can't do it. So that's exactly what we want. So if you see on the next part, if we scroll down and we find the constraint we just made, you can tell it's this one by the plane inside. If you right click that, and you click on drive, this isn't something you've done before, has it? If you click on drive, it opens up this dialog box here. <clears throat> now just with the default options right away, if we click play, see it moved. Very incrementally, but it moved. It actually moved 10 degrees. Very interesting. What if we set this to 360 degrees? Wow, it's moving. It's moving, it's moving, and moving. Uh, it might slow down your computer a bit because it's it's iterating. You'll see that it turned the entire 360 degrees. If we wanted this to go faster, that was pretty slow, right? If we wanted this to go faster, you click on those arrows here. It extends more options down for you. Uh, I wouldn't worry about collision detection or anything right now, uh, unless you decide to make a robot or a actual moving car. Uh, if you go down here and you click on the increments, this is actually the amount of increments it, it does to get to the next step, so it's it's moving one degree per increment. If I moved it up to like three, it would actually rotate three times as fast. Three up from one. Very handy. So this is just a really handy tool to make little mini simulations, if you will. You can actually click on record and then click play, and it will make you, you'll, like, here, I'll just if you just do that and you find a place, whatever, it should come up with this dialog box and you can just set however much image size you want. This is a pretty small image size. Uh, you can put it up to increase the quality. You can put this up to increase the quality as well. Uh, it'll, it'll probably be defaulted to broadband. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead right into another part of this. So we're going to click cancel on both of these. Now that we have our constraint here, and I'm actually going to go up to Environments, into Inventor Studio. And we'll just wait for that to open up. And now if we go here on Animate, in the Animate section, this is what we're going to be working out of. If we go up to Constraints, it should automatically open up this animation timeline down here. Uh, there's a few things. If we go to front axle assembly again, and we find that constraint we made, kablam, and we can decide like an end, an end amount of degrees. I'm going to put in 1,000 degrees. Bam, there we go. And we can actually set a set amount of time for this, which is much nicer to work with than the, uh, the increments in the drive tool. You can actually set a certain amount of time for this animation to take place. So let's say if I wanted Let's say if I wanted it to do this in three seconds. It's going to be spinning pretty fast. It's actually driving, right? So if I set zero, three seconds here, three seconds here, just click everything to update it. Couldn't hurt, right? Um, <clears throat> if you click OK, and if you go, and if you click the Go to Start button, then you click the Play Animation button. See, it's nice. It's playing. It's a, uh, <laughs> you know. It's it's a bit it's a bit laggy actually because it's got a lot of more things to to take into account. But if we go back to 
uh, once we're satisfied with uh, whatever motion we have imposed on this thing, uh, just go back to go back to the start, and if we were actually now we're going to tell it to take the video. So you can either choose to do this in an orthographic mode, or you can go back to the perspective mode. Uh, in under the view tool, you can turn on some shadows if you're if you're a fancy lad. Uh, also some reflections. See, it'll show a reflection down there. This is if you want a nice presentation. If you get just an angle you want, that's a pretty good angle, right? Now, if we go back to the render tab and we click render animation, um, we can dis we can choose a, a height. We can choose a resolution for a video rather. So, uh, 1920 by 1080. You know, pretty classic uh, aspect ratio. Now, if you go to renderer, you can see here that you can actually choose how you want it to render a video for you. If you go here and you set the time to three seconds, uh, it'll be much easier on yourself. Or if you just click entire animation, also much easier for yourself. Uh, if you set the frame rate up to 30 seconds, it'll look a lot nicer. If you go to renderer, you go to render by iterations and select five iterations. And now if you click render and you choose a, I'll just gonna name it test two. This will just be the name of your video file, and it's gonna be coming up with a lot of this. If you want uh, like higher quality stuff, you can always go up here and you can select this to 500. Uh, for now, I'm gonna select broadband, just just for the sake of you know time and ease. So once you have all these. Uh, you're satisfied with all these options. They don't really. Um, this is basically just the quality of video you're going to be making. If you use internet, then you know it's going to be uh, much quicker, but also much crappier. Image size, the same thing. Smaller size, garbage quality. But 1920 by 1080 is really, really high quality. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. It might take a while with this high of a resolution, but I'm going to click OK and see what happens. Now, it should do the same thing as you do when it renders an image. Uh, it should open up this dialog box. Uh, it might say not responding, just give it a give it a sec. As you can see up here, it rendered one out of 901 images. And it's not even done this one. It's only four to five of the way done. But my computer was starting to sound like a jet engine, so I decided that was not a good idea. So what I did wrong here was probably setting the aspect ratio to Blu-ray, the 1080p. So if I went back uh, and changed some of this stuff, uh, and actually keep all of all the stuff that's here. But if you click render, yes, I want to replace the file. And if I just click a smaller image size, it might be a bit better. Nothing has started on the render yet. Oh, here we go. And my computer does not sound like it's about to explode. Um, it's much happier with me now. I'm already up to three, uh, four images. Uh, my computer is starting to sound a bit louder now. Uh, the video card starts working over time. I'm kind of concerned, but it should be fine, actually, with this image size. It ever should be fine. Um, but yeah, that's an easy way to make a video. Just click cancel. I'm not going to wait here for 901 images to render, so I'm just going to click cancel. And click X. And whenever your video is done, you, you just exit out of everything, click finish Inventor Studio. Um, if it's the end of a project, you know, just be satisfied by clicking the X button down here. Okay, so I've actually realized and remembered that last year, in 1CO3, they would make us use the dynamic assembly option for 
uh, simulating our gearing design. So I'm going to go over really quick how to use the dynamic simulation tool. So right right off the bat, uh, you should be have your you should have your assembly open from earlier, or if you just skipped this part, open your assembly and find the part that you want to move. And I'm just going to confirm one thing. If I go down here in the front axle assembly, I've got a nice rotational joint here, so that's good. Basically, when you go into the dynamic simulation mode, it automatically creates joints um, from all your constraints or just recognizes all the joints that are in your assembly. So, if, if you see here, I have a bunch of standard joints. Right off the bat, if I wanted to move this axle forward, just like this, clockwise, or if I wanted to move it counterclockwise, doesn't really matter for now. You have to go into, well, it should automatically take you into this player button. And if it doesn't, click up here on simulation player. And once you're in here, uh, make sure all these buttons are grayed out. If they're not grayed out like this, like like on mine, you're going to have to click on the, the construction tool button here and everything should pop up. And once you're in the menu exactly like I am, you have to go through the joints and find the joint that you want to move. So since I want to move this axle, this one looks exactly like the one I want. So what you have to do, click it in the model tree, right click it, go to the properties tab, click properties, once you're once you're in here, it should probably take you to general. Just just go right ahead and go into DOF one, or if there's any DOF really, just go into DOF. It means degrees of freedom. And there's a bunch of these buttons over here. You can you can add a torque to it, which will make it accelerate infinitely unless you have friction. You can set uh, where it is initially, which is handy too. Uh, what what I'm going to be doing really simply is explaining the imposed motion button. So I'm going to cl click the check mark box, click the check box of enable imposed motion. Um, it might be defaulted to velocity, which is good. We could use velocity if we wanted, but for now, let's say I want it to go two revolutions. So that's 720 degrees. I'm going to go into position. Once I click position. This, this doesn't look like a button, but it is. Just click the middle here, and it should take you to this graphing sort of thing. Uh, you'll see there's a scale, you have degrees on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Then you have the exact same thing down here. And it shows you the starting point and the ending point. Right now we just have no motion at all. It goes from zero degrees to zero degrees in one second. There's no motion at the moment. What I want to do, let's say I want it to be spinning 1 RPM and for 2 revolutions. So, two revol 1 revolution per mi minute, wait, how about 1 revolution per second? Sure, so 60 RPM. Let's do 60 RPM, 1 RPS, so that's going to be 360 degrees per second. So... I'm going to change my my bottom point, my ending point, to 720 degrees, which is our total movement. I want two revolutions. This is just for example purposes. It's going to be whatever. You can probably do whatever you want for your assignments. I'm sure. Um, now, if I wanted, now I wanted a velocity of 360 degrees per second. 720 over 360 is two seconds. So just put in two seconds here, and it should do it all for you. And you should have this graph here. It's actually this easy. This this menu it has a lot of different buttons. You're welcome to play around with. Uh, you can you can set different sections. So if I wanted it to move, uh, for, move for two seconds, then then stop moving for a certain for a certain amount of time. So let's do constant value on the right side of the last point. You have to click on this section here, and 
you like you can double click it and it should it should come up and it should tell you your starting point and your ending point so if I wanted to it to stop for like a second what I would do is I just keep this at 720 degrees and I just set the seconds to one more in the future and then I wanted say I wanted it to do the same thing in reverse well then I just click the next section here oops oh something something went, something went awry as they say uh, oof. I'm gonna just when in doubt maybe just set these to zero mmm perhaps not I think you can actually remove points yeah just like that if you if you mess it up just remove the points and hopefully everything will be okay <laughs> so I'm going to click in this section select this point here I'm going to set this point to 5 seconds and 0 degrees and bam it should look like this it's the same thing it's just it's just math just do your basic y equals mx plus b stuff and you should be good so now once you've done all of this click OK and now you should be able to play it give it a shot it won't be as miraculous as you probably expect but uh, just give it a shot you can see our axle is moving exactly how we want I'm just gonna let it play for a bit Wow, that was amazing. Incredible. Truly groundbreaking. Now. Now that I have my my player, I'm going to try and figure out how to publish, how to make a video out of this. Now, right off the bat, my brain is looking at <laughs> at these buttons up here, publish movie or publish to studio. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make publish movie. Let's try this. Track track vehicle dot I am sure. Um, now it'll probably tell you what codecs to use for your for your video. I'm gonna try full frames uncompressed. If you go and find to where you saved your simulation, everything should be a lot smoother uh, for your recording. But you have to keep in mind that the publish movie button, all it really does is record your screen. So uh, it's a bit it's a bit spooky. Uh, once you're done, you can click the button again, or you can just click escape and click your finished dynamic simulation. Everything should go back to normal. I'm sure for the purposes of your project, it doesn't really matter. Like, for example, let's just watch this again. And you can see I was I was fidgeting around, um, zooming in and out. So don't do what I did. Just keep it, have it still where you want it before you start your published movie. And everything should work out exactly how you want it. Because this is actually a really smooth video compared to how long it was, it was taking me to to do things. Basically, when it's recording, it won't do it in real time like this, right? Because it took me around a minute to record this, and this is only a six-second video. But when you have all your gears moving around, uh, and you've edited all the degrees of freedom for your joints, you can just go to Publish Movie, and you make one of these, and you're done. And that's Dynamic Simulations. Good luck.